Hello, welcome to Growing in Uncertainty. My name is Tess Miller, and through my seminar and coaching business, Wings Unfolded, I help people who love what they're doing, but they're not sure where it's going. I make these videos in part for myself, but I also make them for you. Um, you may have noticed that each week I bring up a topic around something that I'm currently working on. And that's a way for me to use my coach training on myself. Um, but also my hope is that as I unpack some of these ideas, that it'll help you figure out anything that's related to the themes in my life. The two most important lessons I've learned um, so far in life uh, in being stuck and uncertain is that really the only certainty in life is uncertainty and that the biggest growth happens in our lives when we are the most uncertain and stuck but remain open to that process of understanding what's really going on for us. So my intention is to share my stuck experiences with you and to help you with wherever you might be feeling stuck. So before I get into today's topic, I want to acknowledge all of the people that participated in my Joy Week um, last week. I took a break from doing a live video because I was on vacation, and um, I just wanted to do something a little bit different for the week. Um, so I shared each day a post uh, of something that was bringing me joy and asked some other people to share what was bringing them joy. And as they did, their name would be entered into a drawing for a free copy of my book. And I was so pleased to let Maya Stone, um, a friend of mine from college days, know that she was the winner of my book. So I will be sending that to her shortly. So stay tuned, there may be more opportunities to win a copy of my book as we go along. So now on to the topic of the day, believing in yourself. This came up for me recently because I have been finding myself in a place where I'm feeling a little insecure and uncertain about some of my next steps. And I definitely wanted to share with you all how I'm dealing with this topic of, you know, developing more belief in myself, my abilities to, to move forward and make powerful decisions in my life. So, you know, um, one of the ways I've been looking at this is in um, different themes that have come up in my life that have made me have to confront different beliefs that I have in myself. And one of those themes in my life is my sensitivity. Um, that's something that people have always said to me, oh, you're overly sensitive or you're too sensitive. You need to grow a thicker skin. And for a long time, I really believed that that meant that there was something wrong with me and that I you know, definitely needed to root that sensitivity out and toughen up and change and um, grow a thicker skin. And, and sure, um, those are all ways of dealing with sensitivity. Um, but I actually discovered that believing that there was something wrong with me was not helping me at all. I ended up having to change that belief um, and the way I did that was to look at not only where my sensitivity was maybe getting me into trouble in my life, but also to look at where my sensitivity was actually a real benefit in my life. Being sensitive meant that I could relate to people on a deeper level. It meant that I could go deeper in conversations with other people hold space for whatever I or other people were dealing with. Um, it meant that I could tell when something wasn't necessarily good for me. I didn't always listen to that, but I've learned over the years that when I stay attuned to knowing whether or not 
my red flags are going up or not, I know that I am better able to make a decision that fits for me much better than if I ignore those those warning signs. So, you know, that was an example for me of realizing, hey, wait a minute, when I investigated a belief I had about myself and maybe adjusted it a little bit, I could actually trust myself a little bit more. I could actually believe in myself a little bit more. So why am I talking about my sensitivities? Well, I wanted to, you know, just give you an idea of how you might look in your own life about how you've believed in yourself, you know, what you have believed about yourself. That's a really good starting point for looking at your beliefs in who you are, how you feel your life needs to be, or how you want your life to be. So, um, you know, I know that the idea of adjusting or changing your beliefs might be a difficult one to swallow for some people. Um, but I want to give you three examples from my life where my beliefs about myself either got me into trouble or got me out of trouble. So the first example is when I learned how to subtract. I remember the day that we went over subtraction in school. I was in the second grade. I know some people maybe learned subtraction before that. I don't know. But second grade was when I vividly remember having to learn subtraction in school. Now, math was never um, something that I could naturally do. Um, I didn't really you know, relate to numbers as much as I did sounds or to reading or writing. And so the day that we were, we were having subtraction explained to us, for some reason, I adopted this belief that I wasn't going to understand it. So what was the point of listening to the teacher? Uh, so I didn't listen to the teacher at all. I just gave up because I didn't really understand the introduction anyway. And I held on to this belief, well, I'm not going to understand it anyway, so whatever. But pretty soon, we had to do an assignment uh, demonstrating that we understood the concepts of subtraction. And of course, I sat there staring at it, not understanding what I was supposed to do with it. And so I asked the teacher for help, and she was probably busy with something else, I don't know. She tried explaining it to me in the same way that she taught the class, but again, like I couldn't really make sense of the way that she was explaining it to me. And instead of, you know, asking for more clarification, I just, you know, gave into the belief that I wasn't going to understand it. Well, the school day ended and we were supposed to turn our papers in, but I hadn't even started because I didn't understand it. And I felt really horrible. Fortunately, my mom was substitute teaching that day, and she decided to, um, well, didn't decide to. She was there, so she was picking me up, and um, she came in and saw that I was still working on an assignment. And she bent down and could hear the frustration in my voice and encouraged me to just take a deep breath and explained it in a way that was completely different than I heard before, and all of a sudden I understood it. And so, you know, it was good that in that moment I could be shaken out of my belief that I couldn't do it. I knew that my mom was not going to let me off the hook. She's a teacher herself, so I knew that there was no way around this. And so fortunately, I, I did learn how to subtract. But I do wonder what could have happened for me if I'd gone into that day with the belief that I could figure it out. I'll never know, but it is interesting to just kind of, it's, it's a good mind experiment. The second example that I have today is um, some of you may know that I received a doctorate in music performance. And yes, this took a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of effort went into it. Um, in the process of it, I had an option to either write a dissertation, a full dissertation, or I could um, 
do a lecture recital, which for performance majors, the lecture recital was going to be the easier option. And um, I, I don't know. I just, I really wanted to do the dissertation. I really believed I could do it. And all of my peers thought that I was absolutely bananas for thinking that I could do this. But I just knew, I, I knew writing and I, I knew researching and I knew what I wanted to write about. I was excited about it and I really believed in myself throughout the entire process. And I did it, go figure, no problem. Um, but I also noticed that my expectation wasn't that I was going to write the most brilliant dissertation of all time. No, 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 no. My expectation for myself was I want to learn what it's like to write a dissertation. That's all. And fortunately, I had a lot of professors to help me along the way and to help me take those next best steps. And I did. I learned about the process of, of writing a dissertation. It's not the, you know, world's best dissertation in the whole world, but it's mine. And I'm super proud of it. The third uh, example about believing in myself or not is um, auditioning for orchestras for me as a musician. That was always a really challenging thing. And early on in my performance career, I would go into these orchestral auditions and I would try really, really hard to ignore the negative thoughts, of course, that's really important for mental preparation. Um, but I didn't really allow myself to listen to where those thoughts were coming from or acknowledge that place that they were coming from. So they would, they would be there and I'd push them away and it was almost like the more auditions that I would go to, the harder it was to, you know, close that door on the, the negative speak. Um, and then pretty soon my auditions just got worse and worse and worse. And so finally, um, you know, I, I had developed enough um, subbing work and other freelance work that it wasn't a, a huge deal for me professionally that I wasn't taking auditions anymore. Playing in orchestras is fun, but it's not my most favorite performance modality. So I was pretty okay with, you know, letting go of that, that auditioning process for a little while. And then I had a baby. Long story short, babies take a long time to, <laughs> you know, put them to sleep and, um, you know, just take care of them. And so I had to let go of the auditioning once I had a baby. But one day I realized, hmm, I wonder, now that I've had this baby and I'm a little bit out of shape with my performing, I want to get back in shape. What if I use the auditioning to help me get back in shape. It's not about winning the audition, but I'm going to use it as a vehicle for getting my playing chops back in shape. So I started practicing and I, you know, found several auditions that I wanted to take and I just focused on the process of of getting my strength back and getting my fingers back and my breathing and focused on making music and making the excerpts as interesting as I possibly could. And when I did the auditions, yeah, I was still nervous, but I stayed focused on my goal, which was just to have a personal best with each audition. And I did. I didn't win any of the auditions, but I did make it to the next round um, in some cases, I got put on more sub lists. And more importantly, it was that personal best. So again, I noticed that the belief in myself in that situation really related to the expectations that I was setting. Once I could adjust my expectations to a place that felt empowering and meaningful, that was when the belief that I had in myself could blossom naturally. So, um, so anyway, these three different examples of what believing in yourself or not, um, you know, 
are, are all different in their own way. The first example, I didn't believe in myself at all until I knew that somebody else in my life wasn't going to let me off the hook. And then I had to, you know, believe in myself at that point. The second example, I believed in myself completely, even though people outside of me did not believe in my ability to do it. The third example, I didn't really believe in myself at first until I adjusted adjusted my expectations to be something that was more meaningful and empowering. So I guess the moral of those stories is that if you're having a hard time believing in yourself right now in any area of your life, ask yourself what your expectations are. What are you expecting really? Um, where are the shoulds? I should be doing this. It should look like this. It should be happening this way. Are your expectations reasonable and achievable? If not, what could you do to adjust them in a way that engages something more meaningful for you or something uh, more aligned with who you want to be or who you are? To be clear, adjusting your expectations is not about letting yourself off the hook or giving up on yourself. It's actually the opposite of that. It's making sure that you lead with a belief in yourself rather than leading with this unreasonable expectation that you might be imposing on yourself that isn't really serving you in a healthy way. So um, finally, I want to offer the most powerful tool of all when, when I'm confronted with a time in my life when I'm lagging in a belief in my abilities to do something or accomplish something. So when I'm facing a, a really big goal in my life or a big transition in my life that seems so overwhelming, I ask myself, okay, what am I looking at? Am I looking only at the finish line and wishing I was already there or unable to see how I'm going to get there? Or am I focusing on the step that I'm on right now? Or am I focusing on what my next best step is going to be? So... I know that sometimes when we're facing really big goals or transitions in life, a lot of feelings of overwhelm can come up because we are focusing on the end result. How are we going to get there? How in the world am I going to write this dissertation? How, you know, if I had only focused on the end product, I probably wouldn't have sat down to even start writing because it's so overwhelming. But instead, I focused on the first step, opening up my computer, um, the second step, typing my name on there someplace, the third step, maybe writing an introduction, and I just kept going from there until eventually it was done. So if you're feeling overwhelmed by a goal or something that you um, know that you have to navigate in your life, if you can pause for a moment and accept what is happening around that big goal or transition. And then just focus on what you're doing right now about it or focus on what your next best step could be in working your way towards that big goal or achievement. When you can do that, it can be a lot less overwhelming. You don't have to complete the whole project all at once. Everything that we work on takes one step and then another step and then another step. So I, am, I notice myself much more willing to believe in myself when I do have smaller steps that I can take. So here's another example just to drive that point home. Speaking of driving, um, this example has to do with driving. Uh, one time I found myself in a position where I needed to drive home in a snowstorm from Chicago, which is about four hours away from where I live when there's not a snowstorm. 
I don't like driving in snowstorms. I don't know about you, but it's not the most fun time. There's so many variables out of out of my control. Um, and it's it's just scary not knowing what could happen. And of course, I felt overwhelmed. Um, I felt frustrated that I was out of control of the weather and out of control of what the other drivers were going to do. But I noticed that if I could drop down into myself, into my body, and just stay present with wherever I was in the moment and just stay focused on that moment and then the next moment and then the next moment after that, that helped me really calm down and find some serenity. And I could just stay focused on one moment to the next. Um, and then pretty soon after, I don't know, four and a half, five hours, I found myself pulling into my driveway. And I thought, you know what? This is really, this is really how to make it through anything that's big and scary in life is to just stay focused on the present moment and know that all you have to do from one moment to the next is focus on that next step. So I hope this message resonates with you. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm always so grateful for your presence. And of course, I would love to hear any feedback that you might be willing to share. Um, my resources can be more readily found the more people who like and or subscribe. So if you want to support me, please do that. Also, if you share any of these resources with friends and family, that's another way to help me get these messages out there into the world. So you can stay tuned to any of my updates on Facebook or LinkedIn under my business name, Wings Unfolded, or you can find me on Instagram under my name, Tess Miller, and you can certainly see these videos here on Facebook or on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Uh, the playlist is growing in uncertainty. And if there's something that you would like help with related to a big life transition or someplace in your life where you're feeling stuck, feel free to send me a private message. I'd love to connect with you and help you in whatever way I can. And remember that it's okay to be stuck, but you don't have to stay there. Have an amazing week and take care.